In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a drop shadow on an object. There are many different ways to do this in Photoshop. This is one of the very basic ways where we're going to use the brush and simply paint in the drop shadow around our object. What I'd like to do is I'd like to have my drop shadow coming off the side here because the light is coming from the left and my drop shadow is going to puddle basically over here in this area. So one of the basic things with creating a drop shadow, everything's going to be on its own layer. So I'm going to start off over here in my layers panel. Command click on a new layer to put it underneath. Name the layer. I'm going to start off with my brush tool and I am not going to go in and do a black drop shadow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the background color because when a shadow is cast, it's just creating a darker shade of the background color. So I'm going to option click. I'm going to sample the background color. I'm going to go to my color picker and I'm going to darken that up so I get a much darker shade of that background color. With that, take my brush and use my right bracket to increase the size of my brush. I'm going to soften that brush and I'm going to paint in my drop shadow around my object. Very basic, <clears throat> not perfect, but there is my basic drop shadow. It does go around the edges. We're going to clean that up. Now one of the problems with drop shadows is the appearance that the object is floating on the surface. And in order to take care of that, I'm going to do this in several steps. This is my main shadow. This is kind of how I would like it cast, and I could probably have it come out a little bit further here as well, but it still looks like it's floating, and what doesn't help is having all of this extra drop shadow curve around the sides. So next I'm going to do is another layer. I'm going to command click. I'm going to put this right in here. So this is going to be my anchor shadow, and with my anchor shadow, I want to put a very distinct dark shadow right along the very edge here to literally anchor it. So back to my brush, I'm going to do a much smaller brush and go back to my color picker and I'm going to darken that green up even more. Now I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to put an anchor shadow here. I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to put an anchor shadow right here across my object. This is going to help bring it in and anchor my object to there. Right now, I didn't want to do it too soft or too hard. I can always go back in on my layer and use the blur filter to help give that a little bit less definition. Right now it looks a little bit um, sharp. So under the filter menu, I'm going to choose blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to click on that little drop shadow and blur that out a bit until that blends in to the background very nicely. Okay, and there's my anchor shadow. Now it looks like it's actually sitting on my object right there, or on the background. I'm gonna add a third shadow in here as well, and this is gonna be my kind of my mid shadow. And with this, I'm going to grab my brush. I'm going to sample that background color again. I'm going to kind of darken that ever so slightly. And then with my brush, I'm going to go in and I'm going to soften that brush, not make it as big as my original shadow, kind of keep it in between my anchor shadow size and this. And I'm painting with 100% opacity, if you notice. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to be able to get the most out of my brushes. I can always go back in after I'm done and adjust the opacity of my layer. When I adjust the opacity of my layer, this gives me the ability to have a shadow at any opacity that I want. If I paint with the opacity of the brush, say at like a 50%, I'm stuck with the opacity at 50%. I can always go back in my layer and I can handle that layer uh, later. With my drop shadow here, I'm going to take the opacity. You can see I can kind of scale that back a bit with my mid shadow as well scale that back as well, and I can work on getting the shadow to look good from a tonal range. Now I have the issue of this shadow kind of peeking out from around the edge here. 
And if I do it the destructive way, I go in with my eraser tool and I grab my brush, my eraser tool, and I make my brush larger. And I can go in with a soft brush, soften that up, and kind of take my drop shadow away here, start at that corner, and take that shadow away. So it seems like it's coming more in the direction of what it is how the light is actually coming in right there. And with that, I have a ba very basic drop shadow for my object. Now, it may not be absolutely perfect because I did draw this by hand, but these are the basics of going in and adding a shadow to an object to make it look like it's real and anchored. If you don't have that anchor shadow, it just looks like the object is floating. But once you put in your mid shadow and your anchor shadow, that's going to bring it all together. The last thing is, with your shadow layers, go to your layers panel and you want to set each one of these shadow layers to multiply. Multiply is going to allow it to show through the object so we can actually see or show through the background so we can see the background coming through. If I just put the shadow layer on there without using the multiply feature, it looks somewhat gray and it looks like it's kind of masking it out and not really having a shadow um, effect on there. So what I'm going to do is I then set my opacity back so that I can see how that's going to work and then that's going to give me a much more realistic shadow because if I were to take this Photoshop file and turn the background off and import it into InDesign I would still want that multiply effect on that layer when it goes into InDesign. But right now, there's my drop shadow. Now I notice that my mid shadow here has kind of a pronounced edge. Not a problem. I take that mid shadow, go into the filter menu, go under my Gaussian blur, and I can blur that shadow out a whole lot more to soften that so that it's going to blend in much nicer with the background and the surroundings. Now when I'm done, there's my layers and I can adjust the opacity overall. Now, what works great is that if I want to go in and I would like to mask this sh shadow, I can go in and I can take all of my layers, select the layers that I want to with my shadows, I'm going to group them together, Command G, and if I want to mask this shadow, I can actually take my group of shadows here, apply a layer mask to it, and this allows me to mask my shadows as a group. So if I wanted to come in with my brush tool, painting in black on the mask, I could come in and I could paint in black on the mask and kind of give more of a direction to this so that it makes the light look like it's coming around my edges. And that's basically going in and painting on my mask. I need to bring this back just a little bit so we get that anchor shadow edge. There, there we go. So with that, there I have my shadow, just a very basic shadow with my object using layers and brushes and painted.